We're going to take you on an adventure, an exotic journey with a very specific goal to change your mind about an animal that has a towering PR problem. That animal is the vulture. The very word conjures images of winged parasites circling over dying animals in the desert. However, all of those negative connotations completely evaporate when you get a chance to fly with one of these creatures, as ABC's Ginger Z will show you tonight. It's a once-in-a-lifetime, heart-pumping adventure, and it starts 5,000 feet above solid ground. See the mountains in the distance? Those are the famous Himalayas. And that bird that just flew in to eat from my hand? A vulture. I get to fly with the creatures that most people find revolting. As breathtaking and odd as all of this looks, this wild journey has real purpose. It's zero hour in the not so pretty war to save the vulture. In the last 15 to 20 years, we've lost 99.9% .9 of some species of vulture across the Indian subcontinent. That's millions of nature's cleaners almost cleaned out. While vultures come in many shapes and sizes, the beasts don't typically evoke instant empathy, but they do have a champion in this guy, Scott Mason, for a reason. We need our vultures, they, they, they're vitally important. To learn more about this environmental tipping point, we must travel to the other side of the world, Nepal. A nation sandwiched between India and China. As the vulture flies, it's more than 7,000 miles from New York City. I'm hearing a lot of percussion. It's Tibetan monks. Nepal is full of ancient culture and religion that bleeds into the streets. And those streets, they're full of curious children. Farmlands lined with weathered faces, cows and horses occupy the roads, a constant reminder that we are far, far from home. I've made a prayer. Hopefully our flight goes well. But the focus for this trip, the threatened vulture. We are in a village called Gachok, which is the location for a vulture feeding site. There's carcasses everywhere. It is a little eerie. The vulture's main predator, a cheap anti-inflammation drug given to cattle. The vultures are declining because of a drug called diclofenac. When the cow dies, the vultures feed from the carcass and diclofenac kills them. That's why Scott started this place, the Vulture Restaurant. It's one spot vultures can eat toxin-free. Does this give you joy? Yeah. It's just nice to see it working. I would think I would have been grossed out, but it's almost, it's more than nature is like, wow. But Scott's plan to flip the vulture script extends high above this, where we fly side by side with the endangered beast in a unique sport called parahawking. He has trained birds of prey, both hawks and vultures, to fly with humans. He trains them in Pokhara, Nepal, a near magical valley known for great flying for those with and without feathers. Being able to fly with vultures in the air shows the different sides of them, their majesty, you know, they're very intelligent birds. You know, it's kind of like swimming with dolphins, but you know, the aerial version of that. And the birds? Well, allow me to introduce you. This is Bob, this is Kevin, they're Egyptian vultures. So we run a small rescue facility here. Bob and Kevin live here, as do the other birds that we have. We've had other Egyptian vultures in that we've actually released back into the wild. Kevin is one of those birds who would not have made it on his own. Quick tuck mm -hmm. your elbow in as if you're holding a cup of tea. Yep. Fluffy and now that Kevin down. and I have become yeah. accustomed to each your other. Position of your hand. Okay. It is like tea. Like I'm carrying a very fragile cup of tea. It's time to fly. So how will the bird get up to launch with He's us? He's going to come in a taxi with us. In a taxi? Yeah. <laughs> your first time in a taxi with a vulture? <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> wow. Hello, Himalayas. Does this ever get old? Never. Parahawking looked a lot like the paragliding I've done before. Sands the meat. Mmm. I got a whole oh, pouch of beef. Mm -hmm. Kevin's favorite. It's important you keep the food covered because his eyesight is very good. We get checked for safety. Uh, radio check, check. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so does Kevin. Getting his camera on. Okay. Three, one, two, three, we go. Okay, and run. Once we're flying, we have to sync up with Kevin, who's circling below us. We're losing height, that's for sure. Woo! 
and then okay three two one the routine begins hey kevin as we call him a half dozen more times you can feel the rush of kevin coming in hello again kevin yeah we did it it's magic forget that it's not just magic it's majesty here he comes say three two one and he's out but all of a sudden, our flight is interrupted. One wild on him and another one coming in, Tracy. A native Egyptian vulture is harassing Kevin. He rolls on his back, flying upside down, defending with his talons. Okay, Kevin's heading home, so just uh, call him when you can. We all have to get out of there fast. Oh! It was a bit of an adrenaline rush. <laughs> we did a quick exit. We had a wild Egyptian vulture come in. We've got to sort of respect the, the wild birds. This is their territory, it's breeding season. Kevin made it home safely too, even got his routine egg for dessert. When they're flying, it's almost like we're a joke to them. And I think we're very smooth. But they're like, oh, I guess I'll catch up to this thing. And then he's like, see ya, I'm good. <laughs> and we hope they are good or even great someday because in Nepal and everywhere Kevin, Bob and the rest of the vultures need to be saved. And we have to do whatever we can to try and reverse the, uh, the decline of the vultures so, uh, to prevent their extinction. What we're trying to do is educate people to show how majestic they are and how graceful and beautiful and how nice they are. Hopefully people start to have a little higher regard for them as a species. A higher regard a higher calling to save a species at their vital moment. For Nightline, I'm Ginger Z in Pokhara, Nepal.